Stacy and I just finished our 100 day build of the Land Cruiser Chinook and our 1500 mile test drive to Denver, Colorado from Vancouver Island, Canada. We rushed and raced to get this build done so we could meet the deadline for this new exciting sponsor. You guys know if you've been around, this has been huge for us. It's a massive opportunity. And here we are at Nitro Gear in Denver, Colorado. This video is brought to you by Nitro Gear and Axle in partnership with Toy Tech Lifts here in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Nitro Gear and Axle. <laughs> super crazy, super cool for us. This was a uh, bit of a dream come true, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> they wanted to promote their new shop, which is in Denver, Colorado. So that's when everything changed. And that's why the whole trip was set around the due date. Yep, which got pushed back. Yeah, so that was really the whole the whole push to get the build finished, to get to Denver. That's why we're doing it in the middle of winter. <laughs> Going to Denver, Colorado, we were initially just going to bomb the coast, but then this changed and it was a it was a huge push for us. It was mm -hmm. a huge motivator and it definitely tested us. It tested the rig and mm -hmm. we're really grateful that it all worked out like this. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, we're grateful that this happened because we have learned so much in the past 10 days of getting to Denver yeah. um, that we may not have learned just cruising down the coast. So what are they actually installing? So this 80 series came with factory 410 or 411 gears. Pretty well on the highway, but we knew that wasn't gonna be good enough to get us all the way to Argentina with any kind of power or somewhat reasonable fuel economy. So we decided on 488s. My feeling is that 488s will be a really good combo for 35s and the 3.4. Yes, the truck is heavy, but we're prepared for that. Nitro 488s are gonna be super strong and give us basically factory gearing where the speedo will be bang on and we're gonna be able to cruise. We'll also get a chance to look at the locker situation, how they're operating and what needs to be attended to. That is cool. Strongest axles on the planet. intention with this build is to have something that can take us comfortably anywhere in the world whether it be a remote mountaintop pass in Bolivia or comfortably down the interstate. One of the things we noticed when we pulled the front end apart and I was rebuilding it is that the burr fields were very worn. If you watch my Instagram story you'll notice that I had to actually sand down the splines to get the hub gear to slide on. This was a little bit of a concern for longevity. So we looked at new axle shafts. A new set of axle shafts was gonna be, you know, from Rock Auto, it was gonna be about 400, 500 bucks plus shipping. And uh, a new set of factory ones from Australia were about a grand. So we thought, why not get the strongest axles on the planet and go RCVs? <laughs>
you know, if you've watched our latest video, we have not had four wheel drive up until recently. And I was very curious. So what we did when we built this 80 series axle is I installed manual lock and hubs because with the hardened chromoly steel of the RCBs, they don't particularly like to be in four wheel drive all the time. They're not, from my information that I've gathered from the people I've talked to, they don't work best. They won't last as long if they are in constant operation like the 80 series was from factory. It's four wheel drive all the time. So we installed manual hubs. We don't have any of the 80 series transfer case or anything there, so we don't have to worry about that. It's all in the hub. So again, to my knowledge from the people I talked to, you can install 30 spline Toyota hubs, manual hubs on an 80 series axle. That would be from a solid axle rig, not an IFS truck. So anything from an 84 to 85 Forerunner or a 79 to 83 pickup that had manual hubs should technically work on an 80 series. So this is what I did. These are actually the hubs off Jade, Stacy's 85 Forerunner. So we put them on and we experienced some really different and strange things, mainly to make a long story short, the hub was really stiff to spin. It's not now, but it was really stiff. I could barely turn it. I thought that was so strange. We discovered that the snap ring on the end of the burr field was interfering with the axle shaft. So let me show you. When you remove the hub dial from the hub body, you see the end of the burr field, the very end of the axle shaft. And this snap ring is, or split ring, is meant to go sit right on the end of that in, in a little groove. There's a little groove that it sits in. And what I discovered is when I took the snap ring off, it worked. I thought that was really strange. So what I discovered is the snap ring was so stretched out and worn out, it was spinning freely on there and not actually doing much of anything. And it was so stretched out that it's, it was causing interference in the hub somehow. I, I, don't, I don't fully get it, but as soon as I took the snap ring off, the hubs worked. So it was obviously encountering something in the hub body that wasn't let allow, allowing it to seat properly. So am I worried about not running the outer C-clip? No, I've talked to a lot of people. There's a bit of a discussion online or debate whether it's necessary or not. The axle is technically self-centering, so it shouldn't make a difference. Uh, would I like to have it? Yes. Am I going to look for a set of new C-clips? Yes. Am I worried about it for now? No. Am I stoked we have four-wheel drive? Absolutely. Huge shout out to Mason at the muffler shop in Pendleton, Oregon for helping us take the hubs apart and get closer to figuring out why the four-wheel drive wasn't working. Gearing differentials is not something that I've tackled myself yet. It's a skill that I would love to learn, but when it's such expensive parts, it's not something I really want to trial and error when, you know, re-gearing your diffs can be thousands of dollars. So it's not something that I have learned to do myself yet. It also requires specialty tooling and specialty knowledge.
So as if the guys here weren't generous enough, they hooked us up with some Voodoo Recovery gear and looks like some Toytex swag. So we're gonna check out what we got here. So thank you guys so much. These are nice quality shirts. Fits pretty good, I'd say. A couple for Stacy too. We got some soft shackles. We got two soft shackles. And this bad boy looks like a 30 foot recovery rope, which is rad because I'm just gonna, gonna take a guess here that this is a kinetic rope, which is awesome. I've never had a kinetic rope. I'm always using super hard, uh, just toe straps. This is the way to go. Oh yeah. This is the real gear. But, well, it's probably natural to assume that we'll get stuck at some point. Now we'll be able to pull ourselves out. Or pull you out. First try. <laughs> That has never happened in all of my Burfield experiences. Have I got both sides in first try? Never, that. You guys know if you've been around how, how many times I've replaced these. Okay, so we're freewheeling and then locked in, four wheel drive. This tire should spin that one in the opposite direction. This is success. This is what success looks like. <laughs> How exciting. A brand new e locker actuator. New shiny parts. There it is. Thing of beauty. Please let me take that gem from the oh, well. Like the guys there, not only are they incredibly knowledgeable, but they are really kind, really yeah. generous, mm -hmm. and uh, accommodating. They let us, you know, 
show up basically a week late and, and they still got it done, which yeah. is huge. It was a lot of fun. It was a great experience for both of us, especially me. Just, I mean, I got to learn so much, which was really cool. Huge thanks to the guys at DPI Off-Road, Nitro Gear, and Toy Tech Lifts for hooking us up with this and the gear install and comp package. Super stoked. You guys know where to go if you're in Denver, Colorado, or the surrounding area, if you need anything for your Toyota as far as a lift or overland gear, tires, these guys know where to go, they know where to get it, and if they don't, they'll put you in the right direction. So, cheers. <laughs>